Worship is very significant. Today we are mainly worshiping on Zoom, bringing the service live from the Emmanuel United Church. We now listen to the announcements. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Wherever you are joining us from, we welcome you. Here are the announcements. On Sunday, November 6th, designated as All Saints Sunday, Emmanuel United Church will host a memorial service beginning at 10.30 a.m. During the worship service, we shall ask a representative from your family to participate in the lighting of a candle in memory of, of, of family and friends that you wish to remember. Please contact the office before October 18th and provide the name or names of those to be remembered and the name of the family person who will light the candle in their honor. Following worship on November 6th, the fellowship team will be presenting us with a lovely lunch. The congregation has been asked to provide the dessert. So like a potluck, bring something you would enjoy for dessert, enough for your household and at least one other. It can be homemade or purchased and leftovers may be taken home. Badminton meets most Fridays at 1.30 p.m. in the hall for fun. Experience is not necessary. The Canadian Food Grains Bank. Keep collecting. The final date for donations is October 23rd. Uh, donations may be made by check, cash, toonies and loonies, or via e-transfer to eushamilton at gmail.com. The men's breakfast sorry the men's club breakfast will be on saturday october 29th at 8 30 a.m at the church watch for further information news and articles for the next emmanuel moments are due on october 23rd games night will be on october 21st from 7 to 9 30 p.m five dollars per person Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. And now we light the Christ candle. The lighting of this candle this morning. I light this candle asking God to shine his light or God's light upon the families of the two police officers who were shot in their line of duty at a home near Toronto. Constable Devon Northrop and Morgan Russell. Around God's throne and God's light we also ask God to shine God's light upon those who are ill, especially those of our congregation who are suffering from COVID. We ask that that light shine upon the homeless, the suffering, the needy, 
the struggling ones. The peace of the Lord be with you. Also with you. The call to worship. Praise God with a shout of joy, all people. Sing to the glory of God's name. Offer the Holy One glorious praise. Praise God whose presence has been faithful in times past. God has been present with the people of Israel when they escaped Egypt, with the immigrants and refugees coming into the land of promise. Praise God whose care is for each person, struggling or free. God hears your prayers, loves us, and gives us new life. Let everything with breath praise God for God's faithfulness. The hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You. and found a blessing let your light upon us shine teach us how to love each other lift us to the joy divine mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began god's own love is Joining people hand in hand, ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us onward in the triumph song of life. Let us pray. You call us, O oh God, to settle down as we worship you and rejoice in the routine of wholehearted praise. You call us to settle down in our life of prayer and to bring our thanks and our deepest concerns before you <clears throat> as we seek to listen to your voice. You call us, O oh God, to settle down in your service and to seek joy as we work within this faith community where self-serving values of our society are challenging our commitment. You want us to be healthy in mind and body, spirit and soul, 
you are with us as we watch our diet and when we do our regular exercise. You are with us as we explore new ideas and theories and when we discuss issues with our friends. You want us to be healthy emotionally and you are present when we share our feelings and when we hear the deepest anxieties of others. So you gave us the scripture to explore openly to build faith. And you touch our hearts to share our faith life with others. Forgive us for the many times when we keep our pains and our joys to ourselves. Failing to use our experiences to guide, inform, and lift others. Forgive us when we ignore your presence and take matters into our hands believing that we could solve all the problems that life throws at us. Remind us today of our fitness, or finiteness, sorry, and our immortality of a big and glory, and the immortality of a big and glorious God who calls us into relationship. Words of assurance. Health of body, mind, and spirit will not come without effort. It requires careful reflection. We are ready to put time and effort into searching out the sources in our beings to make the necessary changes. We are ready to listen and do your will, O oh God. Pardon and peace will be yours. Thanks be to God. Amen. The hymn, Praise the Lord with the Song of Trumpet. the sound of trumpet, praise the Lord with the harp and lute, praise the Lord with the gentle sounding flute. Praise the Lord in the field and forest, praise the Lord in the city square, praise the Lord any time and Sunshine, praise the Lord in the dark of night, praise the Lord in the rain or snow, or let the morning light. Praise the Lord in the deepest valley, praise the Lord on the highest hill, praise the Lord, never let your voice be still. Praise the Lord with the crashing cymbal. Praise the Lord with the pipe and string. Praise the Lord with the joyful songs you sing. Praise the Lord on a weekday morning. Praise the Lord on a Sunday noon. Praise the Lord by the light of sun or moon. sorrow. Praise the Lord in the time of joy. Praise the Lord every moment. Nothing let your praise destroy. Praise the Lord in the peace and quiet. Praise the Lord in your work or play. Praise the Lord everywhere in every way. It 
was a beautiful morning in the whispering pines. Boris decided to explore his new neighborhood. He wanted to make some friends. He climbed through his pet door and walked around to the front of the house. Crouching down, he sniffed the air. It seemed safe. He tucked his ears back, ran across the yard, and jumped onto the trunk of the tallest tree in the yard. He clung there for a moment. I'll climb it later, said Boris, as he jumped back down. He walked down to the park where he saw a squirrel working. Will you be my friend, asked Boris. I have work to do, said the squirrel. I don't have time to play with you. With that, he scrambled up the tree and out of sight. Boris saw three ducks swimming on Bradley Pond. He ran over to them. Will you play with me? One duck shouted, go away. We don't play with cats. Boris left the park and headed towards home. He was so disappointed that he couldn't find a friend. He stopped for a moment to pray. Dear Lord, please send me a friend. As he walked down the alley, he heard something strange. What kind of animal makes that song, he wondered. He crawled under the fence and walked towards the noise. There was a very tall fence around a little building. There were several strange animals walking, and walking around outside the building. What kind of animal are you, asked Boris. The chicken saw Boris and began to panic. Run away, run away. There's a cat outside the coop. He's going to eat us. I'm not going to hurt you, Boris shouted. But the ch chickens was in such a panic that they wouldn't listen. They continued to run around making all sorts of noise. Who's making all that fuss? Asked a voice from behind Boris. Boris turned to see an old hung dog glaring at him. Son, what the heck are you doing? Asked the hung dog. I was just looking for a friend, Boris replied. My name is Boris. What's yours? My name is Fred. This is my farm. I watch over things for my parents, said Fred. How long have you lived here? Asked Boris. I don't rightly know. I've been here as long as I can remember. Dad was here before me and grandpa before him, said Fred. I bet things were a, a lot more exciting back then, said Boris. Back when I was a puppy, Whispering Pine was just a stop sign and a post office. This used to be the biggest farm around these parts, explained Boris. Or Fred, sorry. Back then, Daddy, Daddy and I had to be on our toes to protect the farm from coyotes 
and other wild animals. Will you play with me? Asked Boris. Son, I'm a little too old to play, said Fred. You need to find someone closer to your age. I asked God to send me a friend, said Boris. Well then, just trust the Lord. He knows what you need, said Fred. But stop by for a visit anytime you like. Boris headed home. He decided to cut through the backyard of his neighbor's house. A family had just moved in and he wanted to see what they were like. He climbed over the fence and crossed the yard. He stood on his hind legs and looked into one of the back windows. Hey, what are you looking for? Asked a voice from up in a tree. Boris was startled by the sound of another cat's voice. Who said that, he asked. Up here, said the voice. Boris looked up into the tree. There, sitting on a low limb, was Taffy, his friend from the animal shelter. Taffy, shouted Boris, as he bounded up the tree and sat down on the same limb. When did you move into the neighborhood? Asked Boris. My family moved in two weeks ago. They kept me indoors until I got used to my new home, she said. Where do you live? Just across the street, said Boris. I've been praying for you, said Taffy. I'm glad you found a nice home. I asked God for a friend, said Boris. I'm glad he sent you. Do you want to play, asked Boris. Sure, said Taffy. They climbed down and play, chase until, down and play, chase until morning. Never in the history of the world had there been two happier cats. Ask, and it will be given unto you. This morning, I want to give God thanks that we are still able to worship even though we are challenged. And to welcome all of you who are worshiping with us via Zoom, I pray that the service would be a blessing. Let us pray. God, we all have needs. And sometimes we need a trusted friend. Others turn us away because they know that they can't be trusted or they know that they will not be diligent. Help us that when we are turned away to continue to pray and to search. For you have that ideal situation and friend for us. Teach us how to watch, wait, and pray for that time will come. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 29, and I'm reading verse 1 and verse 4 through to 7. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles, and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce. 
Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf for in its welfare, you will find your welfare. The Psalm is Psalm 66, verse one to 12. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great power, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth worships you. They sing praises to you. Sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds among mortals. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. There we rejoiced in him who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let the rebellious not exalt themselves. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, yet you have brought us out to a spacious place. The New Testament reading comes from Luke chapter 17, verse 11 to verse 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. As they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus's feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was not one of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Hide me behind your cross, O Lord. And let your name be exalted. Feed me so that I may feed your people. Open my eyes to the wondrous works of your law. And my heart to the touch of your hands. May those hands reach out to all who are listening at this moment and bring healing and peace. Amen. Again, I want to say thanks to all those who have shared in this worship. In, in the chapel only with the musician, my family, and the technicians. And I thank you for being here, but more so I thank you for being on Zoom this morning, sharing in this act of worship. We give God thanks for technology. And though we are far, we are still able to see each other and to fellowship because technology has made it possible. May God bless us all. I want to share with you from the Gospel of Luke chapter 17, <clears throat> verses 12b and 13. Keeping their distance, they called out saying, Master, Jesus, have mercy on us. Master, Jesus, have mercy on us. The story of the ten lepers reflects how society could be crude and callous to those they deem unfit. Leprosy was a contagious disease. And the victims of leprosy were kept at a physical distance from the rest of society because they were deemed as being cursed and sinful, fit to live among the rest in society, unfit, sorry, to live among the rest of those in society. Lepers lived very lonely and difficult lives because their disease was deemed by most physicians as incurable. It was illegal for a leper to enter public space that is used by the rest of society. And the community that they were placed in was mainly built for lepers. In a public space, lepers were mandated to carry a bell and to keep themselves from the healthy community. They were to ring the bell from a distance and shout, unclean, unclean. What they did when they sought Jesus' attention was to disobey the law. They stood at a distance, yes, but instead of ringing the bell, and shout unclean, they shouted, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. 
the leper sensed that the law that was set down to govern them was restricting them and so they deem it as unjust. After all, a society becomes a healthy society when we are able to offer care for the sick, empower the marginalized, and give equal opportunity to all. The law prevented the lepers from being cared for, empowered, and be given an equal space at the table. In other words, the lepers knew that they were not afforded the dignity and respect as a human, all because they suffered a dreaded disease. They felt the segregation between the sick and the healthy, the haves and those who do not have. And their cry was not only for physical healing, but for an end to the segregation so that Jesus could bridge the gap and prove the law that governed them to be unjust. Jesus sensed that the lepers needed more than just physical healing. They needed restoration. They needed to be used as examples of God's redemptive act. Go and show yourselves to the priests, Jesus said to the lepers, the ten lepers. In those days, the law demanded that for a leper to be restored to society, the priests were to issue a clean bill of health. Do not just stand there and tell others that you are healed. Go, get the certificate that is issued by the priest so that human beings could know that you are clean and you are healthy. I have healed you, said Jesus, indirectly. But just to say that I have healed you is not enough. Let the priest put the seal to my healing. And that healing will end the divide between the healthy and the sick. Because in God's world, According to Margaret Atwood, there is no two races, no two classes of people, the black race and the white race, the sick race and the healthy race. There is one race in God's world, and that is the human's race. It is a time for us to get it straight. That what philosophers like Immanuel Kant and others have done to divide the human race in their thoughts and their beliefs was wrong. And God continues to God's work of redemption and restorative justice to prove that we are all one. Let the priest, says Jesus, who once deem you to be sick and unfit for community, mark his signature on the certificate and declare that you are healthy, normal, and fit. This may have been 
one of the greatest acts of miracles done in the lives of these lepers. Once they were not even known by their names, they were called lepers according to their sickness and later on identified by their nationality. Now, they are a people healed and well. The story has a bittersweet end. And to Jesus, he expressed this when he said, were not ten lepers healed? Where are the other nine? On the sweet end, one returned to Jesus, prostrated himself at Jesus' feet, and thanked Jesus. While the others may have allowed excitement and their future plans to forget their source of healing, and they went their merry way. The one who returned to give thanks was a Samaritan, a foreigner in the Jewish line of status, a foreigner from the list of lepers offered thanks while the others went their merry ways, forgetting their source of healing. Sometimes this story reminds us that we need to take note of our source. We who believe that we are entitled who take a lot for granted. Sometimes ignore, forget, and reject our source. We sleep. We wake up. And we sometimes act as though we did it on our own. We sow, we reap. And we sometimes ignore or reject the one who caused the increase. We unite in love and form community and families. And when we fight that connection, we ignore the source that connects us. We note in the story of the cat, Boris the cat, that after he had prayed to the Lord for a friend, when he found a friend, he did not pause to say thank you, but he played all night and all morning. Sometimes there's a little of Boris inside of us. When we get what we want, we go our merry way. And we forget the source, the one who gives, and the one who blesses. Sometimes we are so forgetful of the source that we become dissatisfied with what we get. And we look at what others have. And in an effort to devour and destroy so that we can prove that we have the best, we ignore the one who gives and who continues to give. Today, as a church, we are called to pause and to give gratitude. 
show gratitude for who we are, what we have, and where we have come from. What are you thankful for? What is it that you prayed for and you have received? Have you returned to the one who gives and say thank you? Every act of gratitude to God opens the heart and the mind and the world for greater and better blessing. Have you returned thanks? You have had your breakfast this morning. Have you offered thanks? There is a sense in which our attitude and the attitude of the rest of the world seem to be proving that we are, we are going further and further away from our source and fount of blessing. All because we are not showing enough gratitude. I use the words of Isaiah to call us back to our source. Listen to me, says Isaiah. You who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord, look to the rock from which you were cut and from the quarry from which you were healed. The more we give thanks, the more we shall receive. Amen. Let us pray. If we have taken you for granted, we have taken life for granted, we have taken all our gifts and our blessings for granted, we say sorry Lord and we offer thanks this morning. Thank you for the rest we have had during the night and for opening our eyes to see this new day. Thank you for the light that dispelled the darkness of the night and the gift of food, clean water, refreshing air, and love. Thank you for the warm embrace we receive not only from those who are dearest to us, but from your tender presence. That even when we feel that we are alone, we can sense that you are there. There's another presence speaking, calling, assuring. Thank you for this church family and all those who reach out with prayers, with words of comfort, with loving hearts. Bless this church and bless your world. Heal us from all the anger and the hatred 
and the revenge we nurse in our hearts. And give us a glad and generous heart. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. We're going to sing it. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. receive our offering and we are thankful to do those who continue to give to support the work of this church. Let us pray. These are our gifts to promote wholeness and healing, O oh God. They will go to work in community centers and hospitals. They will go to work in the homes of this faith community. They will work in our homes and in places far from here, among those whose names we will never know. These gifts will be effective. Bless them as we dedicate ourselves to the healing, reconciling work of Jesus Christ. Amen. To him, O oh Lord my God. When I 
I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God to Thee, how great Thou art. Blessing from God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and all our loved ones near and far. May the God of all peace bless us with God's peace today and forever. Amen. I'll look for your emails and we will tell you when it's time for us to be back in worship. We have not decided whether it will be this Sunday or next Sunday, but we ask you to pay close attention to your emails. <laughs> 